The views or opinions expressed on Ann Arbor Inclusive do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the City of Ann Arbor and the Commission on Disability Issues. For more information about the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues, please visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. Hello and welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive, a program of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. I'm your host, Tom Holtland. Today, we will be focusing on youth who are blind and visually impaired in our local communities. The Washtenaw Intermediate School District has a dedicated visual impairment team of teacher consultants, orientation and mobility specialists, and braille technicians. Together, they provide special education related vision services and supports to students, staff, and families in Washtenaw County's local schools and young adult programs in Washtenaw County. From braille instruction to large print and assistive technology, their team strives to provide excellent service to their constituents through equitable, inclusive, and self-reflective practice. I'm sure we'll learn all about these terms, but before we meet our team of consultants from WISD, let's take a look at the footage that they sent us. It has been estimated that 80% of learning is through vision. For those who are blind or visually impaired, learning using other senses, such as hearing and touch, are essential. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, defines eligibility for services as an impairment in vision that, even with correction, adversely affects a child's educational performance. The term includes both partial sight and blindness. Once a doctor has diagnosed a child or student with a visual impairment, a referral is made to receive services from Washtenaw Intermediate School District or WISD. A core of dedicated visually impaired teacher consultants with specialized training conduct assessments to determine services that are required. There are over 140 children and students from birth to age 26 with visual impairments who receive support from WISD professionals. The WISD staff, working collaboratively with classroom teachers in the local districts, map out a plan to accommodate and optimize learning for the student. Instruction in mobility is key in teaching students how to navigate their school, work, or community environment. These skills also transfer to leisure activities and many of our students enjoy a wide variety of activities including band, soccer, skiing, horseback riding, running, and swimming. Teacher consultants introduce adaptive technology tools and tactile materials to assist in adapting the curriculum for students with no or limited vision. Students utilize materials like tactile graphics and 3D images, manual braille writers, which are similar to a typewriter, computer screen readers, electronic readers, and electronic braille writers with auditory output, a very versatile device that performs as a computer. From teaching braille to helping a student learn to use a magnifier or closed circuit TV, WISD teacher consultants work hard to help students reach their full potential. Kathy Christensen, Laura Wright, and Michelle Danilovitz, welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive. Thank you. So before we talk specifically about your team, the visual impairment team, can you tell us briefly about what Washtenaw Intermediate School District is and does? So the WISD or Washtenaw Intermediate School District is an intermediate school that serves, it, um, this is an agency that serves um, all the local, the nine local districts okay. in Washtenaw County. Yeah. And it's kind of uh, goes in between that and the state of Michigan, the okay. Department of Education. Okay. And we provide supports and services to all the local districts. Okay, all right. But we also do like special ed supports and for students with disabilities and um, you know, like early childhood programs like Head Start and uh, 
Great start readiness programs. Okay. And but the, behind the scenes too, there's also like accounting and business and, and technology. Okay. All right. Our main goal is um, the ISD. What they do is facilitate um, education systems um, to help our students um, to um, be successful <laughs> and include and to be included included equitable and um, a holistic approach. Okay. All right. Good. So um, let's talk about the visual impairment team, the team that you guys represent at WISD. Can you tell us just your elevator pitch, <laughs> <laughs> if you will? Well, I, I for, personally, for myself, I teach uh, early on, so um, from zero to five. Okay. Um, so I, I'm, it, lately I've been getting students at around three to six months old. That's when I, I start getting the, the students. Wow. So we work on pre braille skills and visual efficiency and try to get those, those skills um, up. You need some mobility skills when they're old enough to start, to start moving. Wow. But um, the, the most important part is to have the, um, uh, the support for the families. Yeah. Because we use it as a resource and help the families get through that, the grieving process mm -hmm. and then getting them to advocating for their child. Right. And, um, and that's, and then, at the, I guess at the most, what we really want is for the, that child to be functioning with their peers in the regular okay. setting. Right. I don't mm -hmm. think people think of that age Correct. of yeah. being in school uh, and, and already learning, like you said, pre-Braille. That's amazing. Right. right. Well, the, the push is early intervention. They, they're yeah. finding with research, research that it, the more, the earlier we get the children, the better they're off. I bet. Off when they're, yeah. they're to regular Definitely. schools. Yeah. And how about you? So I'm an I, I do. We all do the same thing: teacher consultants for the visually impaired and yeah. orientation and mobility. But I do mostly the O and M, the orientation and mobility. Okay. Um, and a lot of people don't know what that is. Orientation is knowing where you are in space. Mobility yeah. is movement. Okay. So I work with students that are visually impaired and blind to move and uh, be able to, you know, get around their community. I work with the little ones, starting off with just basic concept development. You know, students that don't have vision early on, okay. there's a lot of things you miss because uh, you don't have the vision, like the concepts of uh, forward, backward, left, right, just basic concepts. Right. So we work on that early on, like Laura was saying. And then elementary, we start working on pre cane skills or just getting around the school orientation of the school. And then going into middle school, high school, it's uh, more advanced cane skills and starting to move into the community with public transportation, okay. learning how to use the system. And for a lot of my students in high school um, that are you know, gonna transition into either college or another program, yeah. is working with them, helping them to explore different jobs and careers they're interested in. Okay. And um, I try to help them locate some people in the community that are doing what they might wanna do. Okay. And part of that training is they have to make the phone call, make the contact, uh, figure out transportation, how to get to this person for an interview, yeah. and then interview skills. So we try to really work on the whole person with yeah. our students. Yeah, and when you said pre-cane skills, this obviously it means before they're going to start using the, the cane to navigate the community. When does um, a child start using a cane? Well, <laughs> we actually put them a cane. They're, they're, that's a big push too. Is as right. soon as they can reach out, mm -hmm. we put a cane in their hands. So wow. it could be six months, nine months, and then when they're reaching out, they find out what's out in there. And you know, the cane hits it. Well, then it makes it a lot. You know, it's, it's okay, and then they touch it. So it's um, so it's kind of helping facilitate movement even yeah. by using the cane. Wow. And Michelle. So a teacher consultant for the visually impaired. Um, what we do is we teach the expanded core curriculum. So as we were talking, cane skills, braille skills. Um, and it's so important, actually, to get um, these expanded core curriculum at an early age because it's in addition to the curriculum. So we don't teach the curriculum per se, but we teach the expanded. So they have to learn in, on top of being able to read the braille that goes with it. So they have to read this code. Um, they have to know how to navigate with a cane before they can start walking. So right. it's all of these tools that we have to teach them so that way they can access the curriculum. Okay. Um, so we teach Braille notes, Braille. Um, we give them large print, CCTVs, magnifiers. So, I mean, even the low-tech tools. Okay. Um, even abacus. Just a, uh, abacus, <laughs> even just rulers, like knowing how to navigate a large print or Braille ruler. Yeah. So it's just all those basic skills that you don't think about that they need to be able to access the curriculum before right. they go in there. Yeah, before they get in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like everybody else, right? Yes. Yeah. 
And so you touched base a little bit about age, but who are your customers? Who are your clients, your students, if you will? So in Washtenaw County, there are like 6,500 students in special education. Okay. And of that, there's about 140 that are visually impaired, that qualify as visually impaired through the school system. Okay. So that's about 0.02% of the population. So it's a very small minority of students with, in special education. Okay. Yeah. And but the, but 100 doesn't sound small. Sounds like No, a, no. Yeah, and we like serve 0 to 26 years old. In the state of Michigan, we go above and beyond what other states do from like, you know, graduation age, which is usually 18 or 19, yeah. to 26. Yeah, so okay. we're the only so. state that does that. Yeah. yeah okay. It's pretty close to 26. Everybody usually goes to about 20. It's the Cadillac of, of uh, programs. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Hopefully, yeah. keep it at, you know, keep it at 26. Sure. It does help a lot to yeah. get them prepared to be adults. So, so um, can I ask you this? What is the difference between visual impairment and blind? At, at first, I thought blind was, was going to be replaced by visually impaired, and that blind wasn't a good thing to say. It, wasn't a, it was derogatory, but that's not true, is it? Mm -mm. So can you tell us the difference? Well, so for visual, for actually to qualify for our services, mm -hmm. they need 20, 70 or less in the best eye with best Visual correct. acuity. Of visual acuity, Okay. Yeah. Um, so what that means is that what we can see at 2020, that, or I mean, what we can see at 2070, or at 70 feet, sorry. What we can see at 70 feet, that child needs to be within 20 feet of, of that. Okay. Or an individual who has right. a vision of 2070. Okay. And so those, that's a visual impairment. Yes. That's and that's so that those students, technically 2070 to 20, up until 2200, right before you hit 2200, they're classified as low vision. Okay. And then um, people, people or students who are 2200 are classified as legally blind. Okay. And so that's where that term comes. And so a lot of people, they even have a misperception of legally blind as being blind. And 2200, you still have quite a, quite a bit of usable vision, right. generally. Right. And so a lot of our students even present as seeing, um, but they still sometimes need um, Braille or they use canes. That's when a, a lot of times we provide canes for our students. Okay. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's really, you don't come across very many totally blind students individuals because yeah. I mean even individuals who don't have usable vision they can still go around objects without bumping into it or they know when the lights are on or off so it's very rare to come across somebody who has no vision at all okay so that's all right but those definitions well while we're talking about that um, using canes and so forth in the community are there any tips that you guys have for um, interacting with people who are blind or visually impaired um, any tips for communicating uh, what to do and what not to do, those kinds of things? It's most important to state your name, um, just so they're not thinking about who you are the whole time. Okay. And the conversation just passes by and they're still like, is this Joe or Bob? Or, you know. So it's always important to state your name yeah. when, when approaching or, and okay. introducing. Um, it's always important to, to um, Maybe even when you extend your hand to shake it, just to say, I have my hand extended. So it's not just, so just in case they don't see it. Okay. Um, I think it's also important to, um, when um, talking to an individual, to state their name so they, we, especially in a group. So that way they know you're ta speaking to them. Okay. Um, and it's not, they're just not thinking that it's somebody else that you're talking to. So a personal greeting is mm -hmm. appropriate, mm -hmm. et cetera. What about helping? like coming up to a door or uh, going down a curb, you see somebody that may be having some problem with distance or whatever. Um, I use a wheelchair and uh, I don't like it when people um, come up and maybe I've had people give me a push. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they think I'm, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm going up a hill. Right. Yeah. It's right. not what you do, you, you ask. And right. so I imagine yes, it's exactly. the same yes. thing. And that's, that's most important. Mm -hmm. Don't just assume right. that because they have a disability that they need help um, because right. our students and right. people because that we know are expert, very capable you know? yeah. <laughs> and very independent. And, yeah. right. um, and it's yeah. always just a, they know what they're doing. best right. to ask. So yes. you can always ask for assist to see if they need assistance. Do you need help with whatever it is that they're doing? Okay. Um, but always asking, yes. Yeah. I mean, before. a lot of time you, you'll see someone at a street that's visually impaired or blind with a cane. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know what to do, but if you ask, it's great. If they don't want it, that's fine. But it's also best then to let them take the lead on holding onto your arm and not just pushing them forward in space. Okay. Which is a very insecure feeling. 
Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. very common that people yeah. just will grab the shoulders and just kind of direct that way where it's awkward. You know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so and you're just asking them, hey, can, and you, they know. can I grab your arm? I mean, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's how you, they, And they'll right. probably tell you exactly, exactly. how right. they right. want right. you to. Yeah. Right. Help and that's part of They're what right. we do is help our students learn how to be more directive and assertive and tell people what they need instead of just letting things happen to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because they're, they're in charge. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like Another that. thing is, uh, like, a lot of times people will, um, like I'm working with my students to go into, a, like, the mall and ask for directions. And a lot of times people just say, oh, it's over there. So basically, if you're giving someone directions that's visually impaired, just give them really good spatial directions, like it's turn left, you know, walk three stores, and then turn right. Um, along the hall, or the, the, I'm sorry, the wall. Yeah. So just very specific directions are really helpful versus just yeah. ger general vague Like maybe directions. 100 yards from here, you're yeah. going to see, yeah. not see, but you're going to want to turn. And that's okay, too, to say that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, yeah. that's, uh, I'll see you later, or did you see yeah. that movie? That's common, actually. Okay. And people who are visually impaired, they mm -hmm. use it all the time as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just seen in so, a different way. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, we've talked about Braille. And I wondered if, is that the um, preferred way that a child starts learning? Um, are, there, are there any times where we're not going to use Braille, we're going to use audio or something like that? So from the video, it looks like Braille is still the preferred uh, way of learning to read. Yeah, and and navigate. Is this true? Mm -hmm. Well, it is. Um, you know, it's a, the Unified Braille Code, which came out in 2012. Okay. Um, is is an is an upgrade, uh, updated version of what Louis Braille did 200 years ago. In what way? Um, so Braille is a combination of six dots, and any combination of those six dots make up a word or a letter. So they've changed it to, or the, as we have changed it to make it a lot easier. Some of the contractions were confusing and especially with dot com now or dot org it makes it very sure. really confusing so we had to change a lot of the symbols so that actually helps in the long run it helped a lot to just update it to, the, to today's society okay but i mean we we teach braille um to our students that we want to encourage and the, the, the blind community wants because you, you never know when your your battery is going to run low on your computer or your cell phone or right so it's and, it and really it's like taking away literacy from just kindergartners in I general. imagine so it's like like that they need that literacy because they don't see literacy in the world like sighted folks do um, they see signs everywhere um, where people who are blind don't get that visual input so they're not even seeing that so they have to have all this braille in front of them at an early age which is another reason why early on is so important right um, so yeah, I, Braille is still super pre prevalent. I, it's I like taking away print from a, from yeah. a sighted person, mm -hmm. right. basically. Yeah. yeah. And um, is, can you get any book or any document in Braille? Yes. Yeah. By yes. How, how do folks uh, obtain that? Well, you can, well, either th through us, but, okay. um, you know, so, so American Printing House for the Blind um, supplies those. And there, we have funds that we can put their name down, we get their books done in Braille. Okay. Um, also, the library has some, some good books in Braille. Okay. So, um, and Seedlings is a Braille book company that's um, in Livonia. It's a, a nonprofit that supplies a lot of the books. Okay. And, um, those are, that's a, a resource that many of our parents use because they have all the titles of, of print material and they, they put Braille into those books. Okay. So, Harry Potter or um, Eric Carle books. Okay. Right. So it's great the sighted peers in their classroom can be reading the same book with them, so it's really nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I imagine the teachers and the teacher consultants can have all that ready for them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, oh, yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we just wanted to that you are right, that, that because with all the, the technology that's come out with the smartphones and Braille has been put in the back burner a lot of times. Yeah. And yeah, oftentimes when you get up to like high school, college age, it, it kind of turns more to the technology and, okay. and audit, audio, like audio um, mm -hmm. just with the amount of reading because a Harry Potter book, you know, is six volumes just for one book. So yeah. it's, it's hard to lug around all of that. I mean, there are, we do have the Braille notes that they, we can put electronic books on there and so they can have okay. the refresher Braille um, to read it. But Generally, when you get up to the higher higher levels, they do turn to audio, but it's still super important 
at the young age yeah. just to have that literacy. Yeah. Let's talk about jobs and careers. Um, I imagine most jobs can be adapted, right, and mm -hmm. accommodations made, but what do you see in, in uh, career development for folks who are blind and visually impaired? And, you know, the, well, any job you can name, as long as you can accommodate it, mm -hmm. you know, and make it adaptations. Okay. And so, I mean, that student who went to, you know, MIT, she's now an engineer. Um, you know, so there's social workers. I have students that have been, mm -hmm. a couple actually who have been social workers. Okay. Um, teachers. Yeah, teachers. Yeah, we yeah. have teachers and lawyers. Um, oh, yeah. There's a couple we of We have a, a, Just about a everything. state right. justice right. Um, right. who is. Supreme Court Justice. Supreme Court Justice. Richard Bernstein. <laughs> who is oh, yeah. really Richard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Sure. And there's yeah. also tr transcribers, people that help, you know, create the Braille. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Custodians, yeah. teacher consultants. We actually have someone on our staff who's visually impaired. Um, and it's great because he, you know, has an experience and knowledge of, you know, what it's like to be visually impaired that obviously we don't have, so it's a great asset. Instant credibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. kind of is. Mm -hmm. Which we cool. don't have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to take anything away from you guys. But, um, so uh, partnerships in the community, who do you partner with? Um, we have a local parent organization that we partner with, okay. the M Michigan Parent for the Visually Impaired group. And how does um, that work? And they help put on activities for our students. Um, they help get us technologies um, if we, we need assistance. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, like, we've, done, um, we've done like different art activities with students. I know MPBI was involved with, um, with some of the art activities that Kathy's done in the past. Um, to help, you know, get the students out in the community. Um, there's National Federation for the Blind. Okay. Um, that's another organization that does a lot of activi activities throughout you know, the year. Um, also, they're very advocate for the blind, too. I mean, they go to the national level. And, and in town, us. we have a library. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? The Library yes. for the Blind and Physically yes. Disabled. So right. you can go in there and get all kind of audio books and mm -hmm. large print. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and they have CCTVs and right. technologies there that you can go in and use if you don't okay. have anything at home. That, that what about uh, events and activities through the year? Do you have events? Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> we have many <laughs> events. Yeah. Um, we are in February um, providing a workshop for uh, parents and teachers um, on students who have cortical visual impairment. Okay. And, um, that is a neurological visual impairment, so the eye is healthy. <clears throat> But it, um, it's just the communication between the eye and the brain, basically, is okay. not allowing that to happen. And um, so they, th these students uh, um, have t difficulty with detail, um, foreground, background, two-dimensional objects. They have trouble with faces. Okay. Um, and so it's just um, we adapt things in a special way so that way they can, um, they can access their curriculum. Okay. Um, we're also having a Braille class in, that's starting in February. It's eight weeks long, and it's actually open up to the community. Wow! Um, yeah. And it's it's free for for the community to join. Um, and that we, is cool. It's, yes, it's eight so, weeks yes. for two hours on Monday night, starting February <laughs> eighth. Monday and night. How do people find <laughs> yes. out information like that? Um, actually, we will put that on the website at yes. the WISD okay. website. Yes. All right. And that will put that on the front page so that they, they, they're aware of. of okay. That. Good question. Yeah. Yes. So we've also <laughs> partnered with, I think this is a really cool situation, with Wild Swan Theater here in town yeah. um, to have like drama workshops for our students, usually elementary school. And it helps, um, you know, we really focus on social skills because a lot of times in elementary school, things go, go pretty well. The kids yeah. are really inclusive. But then going into middle school, high school, where other students are more insecure about their, you know, social wherewithal. Everything. Yeah, and, and our students start getting kind of pushed to the, to the perimeter. So this is a great way to kind of like act out and try different ways of, you know, being more friendly or assertive in social situations. I like that. Yeah. I like that. We um, also have just one yeah. more thing. We have Vision Fun Day, which is also in June, <laughs> for, um, where we invite all of our families who, are, who have kids who are visually impaired or, or anyone in the community to come. And we have pizza. We talk about resources, <clears throat> camps. Um, you know, that, and, and the kids get to experience paddle boats and canoes, and, and we have a lot of lot, um, lawn games that they play. Wow. So, it, yeah. And Sounds like fun. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. We've done it for the last three or four years, and the parents really love it. Can we keep going, or do we need to stop here? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more. yeah. Um, briefly, what, what else would you want to share that we didn't, uh, that, that we haven't gone over? Well, we I was have, just going to share that we do a lot of empathy awareness activities, like in a classroom with a student that's visually impaired or blind. Kay. We go into the classroom and we will talk to the other students. So they understand there's not this elephant in the room of like, you know, how do we deal with this? Right. And a lot of times we'll actually put blindfolds on the kids and let them do the same thing that the student does. Okay. Like walking around or doing activities, you know, academic activities. Yeah. And that speaks louder than anything you could ever tell someone. Okay. And they get it. Yeah. And we also have disability yeah. awareness, you know, just yep. to bounce off that, it's disability awareness groups at all kinds of different disabilities and we have stations set up and those are done. The last one was done at Clegg. We actually, we have it every one every year at Clegg. So um, that helps with um, kids understanding, bring their general ed education children in to see what what, um, what the kids have. Um, okay. That they experience differently. And, and put under the blindfold. Yeah. Read Braille. Mm -hmm. And that helps with understanding and empathy. Yeah. I bet the kids really get into that because it's something different, yeah. totally different than what they're used to. Yes. Right. experiencing and playing with. They right. love learning the Braille. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. They love being able to Braille right. their name. I think that's like the mm -hmm. highlight of, yeah. of the empathy and disability awareness. That is cool. I always like it when you get a business card from somebody that it's also in Braille mm -hmm. to, for their name and contact information. Mm -hmm. Universal access, right? It Universal is. design. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure having you guys here and uh, this is a lot of good information. I want to make sure that uh, you know, people can go to the website and find out more about these events and workshops, et cetera. So the visual impairment team is an impressive and experienced group providing youth in our communities a really vital service, one that educates to dispel myths and stereotypes by literally leveling the playing field for our kids with visual disabilities. Thank you again to Laura, Kathy, and Michelle uh, for spending some time with us. Thank you to our viewers for tuning in uh, into Ann Arbor Inclusive and on behalf of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues, we wish you a happy, safe, and peaceful new year. For more information about the resources mentioned for the visually impaired, contact Kathy Christensen at 734-994-8100 extension 15227 or email kchris at washt.org.